Honda's relationship with alternative powertrains reaches back long before it was a widespread concept with mainstream consumers. Let's take a look at Honda and their luxury arm Acura's state of electrification. In the late 1980s, as executives at the Japanese company mulled over the automobile's future, electrification rose to the top of their list as a viable alternative to power cars. In 1997, the Honda EV Plus rolled off the production line. A subcompact two-door hatchback with 66 horsepower and a range of 81 miles. This was a legitimate first entry into the EV space for Honda. With a $54,000 sticker price, that's around $98,000 by today's standards, the EV Plus had limited customer interest, with only 300 leased in the United States. In 1998, California loosened strict zero emissions targets, and hybrid powertrains made them easier to meet. Together, that took the pressure off for electric tech. As a result, the EV Plus's run was over after only two years, making way for the mass-marketed hybrid Insight and Civic. But innovation was still at the forefront with the FCX, the prototype hydrogen-powered car coming next. The Honda Fit EV arrived in 2010, followed by the Clarity Fuel Cell and Plug-in Hybrid in 2017. Over the past several years, Honda has kept a toe in the alternative powertrain space and have verbally advocated for not only electrification, but also hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles as part of what they call a sustainable transportation future. But when it comes to delivering product, they've lost some traction to other manufacturers. From an outsider's perspective, it looked as though they'd been waiting to see what everyone else was going to do and they lost some momentum. In their defense, they've been prodded once before with aggressive emissions mandates, and it's understandable, given the amount of money involved, that they take more of a wait-and-see approach the second time around. However, they're quickly catching up, recently announcing the company will dedicate 8 trillion yen, about $61 billion, to complete carbon neutrality, meaning offsetting any carbon-emitting actions with equal carbon-reducing actions by 2050. And remember that we're talking about the Honda Motor Company. So this will promote EV progress across a lot of platforms, not just cars, but also motorcycles, outboard boat motors, even lawnmowers. 43 billion yen or $328 million of that total will go to solid state battery development, which theoretically means shorter charging times and longer range with products coming by 2024. But this, as with other manufacturers promising similar technology, remains to be seen. In the meantime, however, they've been slow to get started on their 30 EVs by 2030 promise. So have had to rely on partners like GM and both their Ultium battery and platform technology, as well as partnering with them in the fuel cell arena. If Honda want to sell 2 million EV units by 2030, they have got to keep pressing. They've also launched a partnership with Sony to sell cars under the brand name Afila, with their first prototype being a full-size sedan featuring level three autonomous driving. And they've committed $14 million to help boost hydrogen fueling infrastructure in the US, something that is greatly needed as there are only 55 current chargers, and except for one in Hawaii, they are all in California. In 2023, Honda fans only have two electrified options. There's the compact CRV crossover as a hybrid, or the midsize Accord sedan comes in a hybrid. But there's a lot more coming down the pike. Uh, soon, Honda plans to release the Prologue, that's a small, pure electric SUV. Uh, the CRV will get a fuel cell model. That's still pretty niche. It should arrive by 2024, and it still makes a lot of sense in parts of the country. And Acura has announced a larger premium electric crossover that'll be called the ZDX, a name you might remember. For now, that's just an idea based on a concept car. Honda has targeted 2024 for their first fuel cell model and 2026 for their proprietary e-architecture to get fully into production. And they're working with their dealer partners to install charging stations based on expected sales volumes, while Acura claims it will sell EVs entirely online. With some substantial financial backing and an executive team looking like they're back atop the EV bandwagon, we'll see if Honda and Acura can once again claim status as electrification innovators.